Good morning, everybody. Good morning, the hour of 10 o'clock having arrived. Uh, I call the meeting of December 10th, 2019 to order. And uh, may I ask, Greg Hart, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to be followed by invocation, so please remain standing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, please remain standing as I invite uh, Pastor Jared Olson from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Wheaton to lead us in invocation. Pastor? Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the wonder of your creation. Even on this cold December morning, let us never take for granted the beauty that you surround us with every day. We also thank you, Lord, for the gift of community, for this community, for this county, for who we are, where we live. Uh, help us to continue to do things that make a difference in this world. We also ask that you would let your spirit dwell in this room today, be with those whose decisions affect the lives of so many people. Let your wisdom and your strength guide us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Chaplin? Here. Colvert? Here. Dessart? Here. Giciani? Here. Eckhoff? Here. Elliott? Here. Hart? Here. Healy? Here. Krajewski? Here. Larson? Here. Noonan? Ozog? Pachowski? Here. Renahan? Here. Rutledge? Here. Selman? Here. Tortatori? Here. Zay? Here. 16. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, on the order of Chairman's report, uh, we have a couple of uh, presentations here. First and foremost, um, I'd like to invite my old friend, Carol Simler, to join me up here at the podium. Today we are joined by DuPage PADS President and CEO, Carol Simler, and, uh, and her team. Come on up here, Moria. Well, a long-time friend who's a young person, <laughs> yes, 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 I thought about that, sorry. Um, in any event, uh, so yeah, we're coming up to the winter solstice, and you know it's the planets and the earth is turned away from the sun, right? And my brother-in-law knows that stuff. And it's the longest night of the year. So we also examined its impact on people who are homeless. And uh, on December 21st, DuPage pads will mark this National Homeless Persons Memorial Day, which is commemorated in more than 175 cities across America. And uh, Carol is joined by Karen Ayala, um, our Executive Director of the DuPage County Health Department, Betsy Carlson, Director of Saver Living Family Shelter. Betsy, there she is. Uh, we have Harley Jones, CEO of 360 Youth Services, and Scott Ostkin, yes, um, uh, here, Vice President of Programs for DuPage Pads, and our own Community Services Director, Mary Keating, ladies and gentlemen. So I will read this proclamation and ask Carol uh, to say a few words, please. So whereas December 21st, 2019 marks the first day of winter and is the longest night of the year, and whereas in the season of generosity and sharing, citizens of DuPage County are encouraged to commit themselves to promoting compassion and concern for all, particularly during the winter months that pose extreme hardships for DuPage County citizens who are less fortunate and without homes. And whereas, hunger and homelessness continue to be a serious challenge for many DuPage County citizens who have the right to adequate food, housing, clothing, safety, and health care. And whereas, homelessness raises one's risk of illness, injury, and death. And whereas, the National Coalition of the Homeless and the National Health Care for the Homeless Council have designated December 21st, 2019 as the National Homeless Persons Memorial Day, and whereas on Saturday, December 21st, 2019, a remembrance will take place in DuPage County to honor those who have passed away in 2019 as a result of homelessness. And whereas by joining together and remembering our neighbors, we can honor their lives by working to provide solutions to end homelessness within this county. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Daniel J. Corona, Chairman of the Board, members of the Board, do hereby declare December 21st, 
2019 is National Homeless Persons Memorial Day in DuPage County to remember those who have died homeless and to encourage citizens to support all local efforts to resolve the factors that lead to homelessness within this county. I'll entertain a motion. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Enacted this 10th day of December 2019. Thank you, Carol, for the marvelous work that you do. Please accept this, and we'd be uh, delighted to hear a few thoughts from you. Please. Thank you, sir. So today, we're standing together uh, to renew our commitment to end homelessness here in this county. As Chairman Cronin said, December, December 21st is the winter solstice, the longest day of the year, the first day of winter. And we'll take pause that evening to remember the seven individuals who were members of our community who died while experiencing the shocking inhumanity of homelessness. On this night, we're going to gather with our volunteers and clients at all three DuPage Pads overnight sites. We're going to remember those that have died without stable housing in this county. Our purpose is to commemorate their lives, those that have died while being homeless, who died from illnesses or conditions directly related to their homelessness. And for many, this will be the only service that will be commemorating their lives. The causes of homelessness are complex, and we're dutifully aware of the impact of homelessness it has on our community and our municipal budgets. The fact remains, the lack of housing which people can afford is unhealthy, traumatizing, and significantly shortens individual lives. We need to invest in our shared humanity through investments in affordable housing. We need to continue to build healthier and more compassionate communities that ensure that all residents' basic human rights are met. And today, that day, and every day, we're working to engage those that are unsheltered in our community. We want them to have support and the needed services. And so it's at your place Please call our toll-free number, because what's going to happen then, that we'll, we'll ask for information, and we'll also then send a team of outreach workers out to engage these individuals. So in this season of generosity and sharing, let us call to mind the DuPage Pad citizen, DuPage, I'm sorry, DuPage County citizens who are at, at PADS, who are less prosperous, living in poverty, and without stable housing in our county, particularly those in these winter months that pose extreme hardships and challenges. And may this homeless Memorial Day be a reminder of all of us working together as we build our housing infrastructure and reinforce our safety net of food, medical, and housing assistance so we don't lose another person next year who died homeless because homelessness should never be a fact of life here in DuPage County. And I'm asking you, members of the county board, to be the hope, you be the hope that people seek. So join us December 21st by remembering the seven individuals who are homeless as we honor their lives by working to provide solutions to end homelessness. I wanna ask you to stand with us that night because I believe and I think you do too, that in our county, every life matters. So I wanna thank you. Thank you from all of us to all of you for what you do and what we can do together. So thank you for you. Oh yeah, we yeah. like pictures. Yeah. Never see these pictures again, but I know they're. Uh, they go somewhere, right? Don't you put them somewhere? They're in the newsletter. Yes, on the website. Yeah, on the website. Please. They want your picture. Yeah, they want you. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thanks again, Carol. Thanks again. Take care. Thank you. So yes, moving right along, we um, 
We're excited, excited this morning uh, to, um, to listen to and um, to partake in our annual PACE budget presentation. I look forward to it every year. Um, our PACE representative, Tom Marcucci, uh, a civic leader in DuPage County for many years, the former uh, mayor of Elmhurst uh, and a great friend to all of us. We're pleased to welcome uh, Mayor Tom Marcucci, uh, who will uh, give us uh, a report on PACE. So please join me here at the podium. Thank you, boss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad to know you're excited <laughs> about my presentation. These can be sometimes a little on the dry side. No. And I try not to make them dry. I think I've established a reputation for uh, delivering the, the budget report as required by law, but more to the point, to bring you into the loop, to bring you into a little bit of knowledge and know-how about what's going on. So I'll talk a little bit about numbers. You have the budget document. You received this quite some time ago. It's a book full of numbers. There's a lot of numbers in there, and we, we could just run down a list of numbers and then say thank you very much. But I like to give you a little feeling of what's going on at PACE and where we think we're going, what our trajectory is, what our challenges are, <clears throat> and, uh, and what, how I see things have rolled out over the last year since I was last year, and how things are going to uh, uh, progress through the coming year. So here's our headline. PACE presents a balanced suburban service and regional ADA paratransit operating budget without the need to raise fares or cut service. Not every year can I say that, but I'm saying it this year and that's the start. But this year I want you to take that headline and just park it because I'm going to come back to it because there's some stuff underneath that that is of interest. Uh, you should know that there was a, a budget public hearing here in the DuPage County Center. It was held on Tuesday, October 29th, 2019, where I personally conducted the meeting. We had zero attendees with the exception of Ray Campbell. You may or may not know Ray. Ray's a strong advocate for the ADA community here in DuPage County, and his particular focus has been on transportation over the years. So when Mr. Campbell came into the room, I said, glad to see you, and I'm anxious to hear what you have to say. He said, I have nothing to say. He said, you're not raising fares, you're not cutting service, so I'm good, but I just, I'm interested, so I'm here. That was the extent of our hearing this year. That's important because that means that the public has been informed and has not, didn't feel the need to come out and talk about the shortcomings of the budget as they, as they would see it. Here's the numbers that we did talk about. The suburban service for PACE this year is projected to run $239 million. The ADA paratransit budget is $195 million. That's a total of, not that you can't do the math, $434 million. Within our budget is $112 million uh, in capital as received from the Rebuild Illinois bill that recently passed in Springfield. Of the 112, 68 of that is directly from that bill. So that gives you an idea of the impact it's going to have on PACE over the coming year, and actually over the coming five years. That's a five-year bill. At the end of the five years, some of it will live on. A, a small portion of it will live on about $12 million. It will, has been adjusted that will be there forever going forward. This will allow PACE to get its capital program up to a, a good, good uh, what's the term they use, good, good status, good, a state of good repair. Um, often in this presentation I've mentioned that we can't buy as many buses as we want to buy. A bus receives a lot of federal funding. The federal rules and regs require that we keep the bus for at least 12 years. We're keeping some buses 17 and 18 years. Uh, Chris Rose, who's here? Chris, I want you to raise your hand. I'm, Chris Rose, if you don't know, I, hope, I think you do know, is the DuPage County Customer Service Representative for PACE. She is me every day in the county to help you serve your constituents and make sure we're delivering the service you, you, uh, you want. I called Chris Rose one day and I said, I'm standing at the, I'm in my car at the intersection of North Avenue and York Road in Elmhurst where I live and there's a Pace bus here and it, it just, it's like all nicked up and battered up and I, it looks like the rearview mirror was held on that bus by uh, uh, tape, by duct work, by duct tape. That shouldn't be. Uh, that's not presenting a good product to our customers. So we're going to be able to renew our, our rolling stock a little bit more aggressively uh, than we have in the past. 
Having said that, we're not going to be able to make all those adjustments this year. We're not going to be able to buy our rolling stock divided by 12 this coming year because, A, we didn't know the money was going to be there, and, B, you just don't go out and start spending money willy-nilly just because you have it in your checkbook. So we're developing a five-year capital program that will include buses but include a number of other things. Of the money that we got more than from the state, more than 70% of it, 75% of it, was as a result of specific requests that PACE had made, what they call earmarks to the budget. So we had asked for, by way of example, we're building a new uh, bus service center in the northern suburbs. Uh, that's a big chunk of that, that money. We're expanding our bus on shoulder program, both on the Northwest Tollway and on I-55. It's one thing to go out and buy the buses. Those are expensive buses. They cost a lot more than a regular bus. But then, as Mayor Grasso used to tell me, what about the parking? We got to acquire land. We got to build parking, et cetera. If you've seen, I hope you've seen the station we built on, I believe it's Barrington Road on the Jane Adams on the Northwest Tollway that involves port parking on both sides of the interstate and a bridge over the interstate, a pedestrian bridge. These are expensive programs. So uh, that's where a lot of that uh, kind of money uh, is going to be going over the next uh, five years. Um, uh, and that $11 million, $12 million that's going to go on forever, that was an adjustment. That's part of the, the increased uh, gasoline uh, sales tax. So also in the big numbers, I like to mention every year that we're not raising the fares. The fare is $2. The reduced fare is, is $1, and a transfer is $0.30. Cents. So those are kind of the big things. But let's go back to that headline. No need to raise fares and cut service. That headline comes out of the accounting department. The pencil pushers, the guys with those green things on their head, and they do that kind of math. They came up with that, and they tell us that. But on the other end of the building are the people who are actually in the bus business, who run the bus system, who make sure that the buses are serving the needs of the community. And they're saying, we've got a handful of routes here, it turned out to be eight, that are not meeting our performance ratios. We have a number of performance ratios. The best one, the one that's easiest to talk about, is the recovery ratio. 30% of the cost of that bus going down the street should be paid for by the people who are putting the money in the fare box at the start of the bus, now with a venture car. Okay, so 70% of it is on the taxpayers, 30% of it is on the people that use it. If the bus isn't recovering 30%, it's, quote, underperforming, and the taxpayers are carrying more of that load. All right, and so they go, well, we got a number of these who are underperforming, like, and they start telling me the story. Well, we, we have one bus that, that literally carries two people a day. Every day, two people, same two people. All right, that's not exactly mass transit. That's not serving the needs of the community. That's serving the needs of those two people. So wait a minute. So now I'm in the middle. I got the accountants telling me no service cuts, and I got the operations people telling me we have to cut service. So we decided to embed that in the budget report. On page one, I think paragraph two or three of that document in front of you, it says service cuts. Well, we just didn't feel like that was uh, transparent. We weren't being fully, the headline wasn't telling the whole story. So we decided to pull back those service cuts until public hearing. There was a legal argument within PACE. If we put those service cuts deep in this budget and we hold a public hearing on the budget, does that fulfill the state requirement to hold a hearing before you cut back service? My feeling was, I don't care what the lawyers say. No. It's not being fully honest with the people who use that service and who need that service, either the individuals or their communities or their elected representatives. So we pulled that back. That was inappropriately, inaccurately announced in some media as PACE board voted to pull back these cuts. We did not vote to pull back the cuts. We haven't voted to do the cuts yet, okay? But we had discussed them in public. That's our job. So in DuPage County, the ones that really matter are uh, the late night runs out of the Lyle Metro Station will, I believe, going to be cut the last run because there's virtually nobody on it. And then there's another uh, route that runs on a Sunday uh, that uh, uh, Route 59, I'm sorry, Saturday, Route, route 559 Saturday uh, is another route that, that virtually serves uh, no folks. Uh, near DuPage County, but not in Bay, DuPage County, there's some, uh, we're going to be looking at 540, which is Farnsworth in, in Naperville. 
and on the eastern side, uh, Route 669, which is on Wolf Road, but could easily be serving people in the Hinsdale, Burr Ridge, uh, uh, LaGrange kind of area, uh, and that has to do with getting to uh, a route. So we, we, it's not entirely true that the bus that we are not look. it's our job to look at these routes individually, consistently, which is another way of saying constantly, and make sure that there is some relationship or some, some chance that they're going to get to a 30% recovery ratio. Now, for those of you who've read this document at length, in there we also say that our overall recovery ratio is nowhere near 30. It's like 17. It's like 16.4 or some such number. Well, how can that be, Tom? Either you're 30 or you're 16. And the answer is that not all types of service return the same amount of recovery ratio. So the big overall number is 17. The fixed route target is 30. For ADA service, the fixed route target is 10. That's prescribed by state statute. As a matter of fact, it says we must recover 10%. Well, quite frankly, to get to 10%, we have to do some financial gymnastics to get there because we really run more in the 7 to 8% range. But, but so, and of course, to raise that fare in ADA, which we've done two or three times since we took it over, we have to hold public hearings throughout the entire Chicago metropolitan area. And the folks who come to those meetings, and I've conducted them, not only in DuPage County, but helped out in the city of Chicago, these are the folks who are le least able to pay in our society, least able to pay for uh, that kind of a service. It's a high cost service. An ADA ride can easily cost 40, 50, or even $60. 10% of that is $6. $6 is a number that they just simply find difficult to meet. So that's a, that's a little bit about the, uh, the ADA and this thing that I was very concerned about when it was going on six, eight, ten weeks ago about the headline not really telling the whole, uh, the whole, the whole story. We have had some, um, some successes in DuPage County uh, that I would like to mention. One is with uh, Hamilton Partners and Invesco, the building, I believe it's in Downers Grove. We entered into a private-public partnership with them. They're underwriting the cost of that route a bit, so it's not all on the taxpayers. There wasn't enough business for us to put the unsatiated part of the cost on the taxpayer. So we said to Hamilton Partners, you've got to come along and help us out, and they did. Those are good plans. There were more of those when I was first on pace. There are less today. That's unfortunate. The private uh, side of the equation doesn't always want to car carry their share or their fair share, however you want to call it, and they've dropped off. That's unfortunate. But we generally reduce that service when that happens. We do not uh, impinge that on, on the taxpayer just because a private entity doesn't want to help uh, 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 carry that kind of a situation anymore. Uh, Pace added uh, additional bus service on, on uh, I-55. I hope you're aware of that. We have received and we're looking into a request for additional service in the Willowbrook Corner area. This has come out of the school district and a number of elected officials, some are, who are in this room right now, and there is no resolution to that. It turns out to be a school wants something. Some folks trying to get to the train want something. There's a general need for mobility around the area. This is something that may end up with a community van uh, at some point. Uh, as you may know, you see those little PACE vans running around. PACE will help secure those vans uh, for different communities, and the communities pay a lease rate to PACE for that. That lease rate does not cover the cost to that, but it becomes a recovery ratio thing for us. Uh, so that's one of the ways of, of getting to these. It's one thing to do big um, uh, mainline bus routes, but now we're getting down into of how do we cover that last mile and how do we get people where they, they need to go. And this is really where PACE is at. Several times in the last years I've been asked at this podium, well, what about Uber? What, how are you going to deal with Uber? And my answer was, I'm not worried about Uber. Uber is much more expensive than riding a PACE bus in the neighborhood of five to seven to eight times. It doesn't work for our normal customer is trying to get to work. And to have to pay a taxi fare every day, twice a day, doesn't work. But now there's a new twist. We're looking at Uber to cover that last mile, to cover that last little bit, to get from the main line into the industrial park so people can get to work or into a downtown central business district. There are experiments going around the country. A lot of them are failing, but at least we're trying. We're going to figure this out of how to cover this last mile so that we can deliver the kind of service people are looking uh, to us to do. 
Other highlights, uh, we've converted six routes in DuPage County to posted stops only. I understand from Chris Rose that there was a question about that, about what does that mean. That means that, like right now on St. Charles Road where I live, I can step out in front of my house and raise my hand and the bus stops. All right? That's bad. That's bad because the bus has to stop for me. And then everybody on that bus has to wait for me. So what we're trying to do is eliminate what they call flag routes, where you flag down the route to posted stops. So somebody in my neighborhood or living along St. Charles Road, say in Lombard or Glen Ellen, has to walk to the route and then choose. Am I going to go one or two blocks this way or one or two blocks that way? It controls the number of time the bus stops. Why is that important? Because that allows the bus to move down the route faster, which the customers, our customers, want. They want to get to work just as if they were driving their own personal car. So we're eliminating those uh, flag routes uh, uh, as quickly as we can without being too disruptive. And the last thing that I wanted to mention is that this issue about looking at these eight routes that we're considering the cutting, it's not to balance the budget. The budget is going to be balanced. But if we can do that, then we can re uh, redirect those funds to a route that will carry more people. That's the idea. PACE is a conduit for tax dollars to deliver a service, and our, our metric that really counts is how many people are riding the bus. That's the metric that counts. So it costs the same amount to subsidize a route, whether it's got four people on it a day or 40 people on it a day. So we look for areas that can use the service, need the service, demand the service, and look to prune our tree from our old service that may not be worth anything anymore because the big employer in that industrial park left a number of years ago. So that's basically the gist of what's happening at PACE. I hope that makes you a little more informed beyond the budget book that you received. And of course, I'm here to answer any questions that folks may have. Um, sounds great. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, uh, Mayor, uh, Member Chaplin. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Marcucci. I always enjoy your presentation. Um, you. My question is, I think the last mile program is really great. I think we're doing um, going above and beyond to try to get people you know, to that last mile. I think that's really wonderful. Um, what what's PACE doing to um, go into the lower income areas of DuPage and um, maybe helping those people get to their jobs? Because I know when I was public transit chair, we had talked about the lack of sidewalks to PACE bus shelters, mm -hmm. even the lack of shelters, mm -hmm. um, which really puts, you know, it's hard if you're, you're waiting on the elements or there's no sidewalk to get to your um, uh, bus stop. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, you know, because sometimes the people that are going that last mile, they might actually have, they might be able to afford that Uber, you know, but sometimes those lower income areas, they, you know, they may not have that opportunity. So mm -hmm. I'm just curious, are you guys reaching out to those? I know in Willowbrook, maybe that's part of what you're doing with the van. I think that's great. But any other areas that you've indicated? Well, uh, you raised the issue of sidewalks and pads and bus shelters. Mm -hmm. And if you'd asked me that question five years ago, the answer would have been no. We don't do that. We're a bus company. So let me soften that answer. No, we don't do that. We're a bus company. We run buses. But, but it's obviously part of the system. If you, the, I don't know if you saw, the Metropolitan Planning Council recently released a document about transportation in the Chicago metropolitan area. And one of the things that they pointed out as a shortcoming is the lack of sidewalks, uh, particularly in suburban areas, which means, hello, pace. So it's just not, has not traditionally been in our budget. Uh, we don't own the land. We just don't own the land. We can't just go put sidewalks wherever we want. Uh, however, okay, so now that was then, this is now. We need a more sophisticated, enlightened view of this. We just, as you know, received a, tre uh, a tremendous amount of money, quite frankly, from the state. About two-thirds of that was earmarked. We know where that's going. That means one-third of it is up to us over the next five years. So we're discussing now and looking at how can we help communities start working with different cities and villages in DuPage County to acquire the right to either build ourselves or allow them, with maybe some funding from us, a grant, to build a sidewalk in their community. I will share with you that, again, enlighten. In the past, some mayors have and communities have actually rejected bus shelters and sidewalks because, believe it or not, brace yourself, they didn't want to support a bus system in their community. Why? I'll leave it up to them. 
you can go ask them. It, it doesn't make any sense to me, obviously. So this is a need that we have now has really come to the forefront. It's kind of like the Uber thing. Well, you know, it was easy to say three years ago, oh, I'm not worried about them, it's too expensive. It's not that I'm not worried about them anymore, it's that I want to work with them. They've become such a strong entity in our society and our culture, on-demand uh, vehicle services, that we need to figure out how to either integrate that into our system or work with them to get people to that last mile. So I hope that helps a little bit. Further questions? Uh, Member DeCiani. Thank you for your presentation today. And uh, one of your comments about Hamilton Partners uh, co-oping a, 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 a project with PACE kind of mm -hmm. sparked an interest. A, a while ago I had brought to the table a, a group called Autonomy Works. It's a, a company in Downers Grove that helps uh, employ uh, people with disabilities. They've mm -hmm. got kids with autism there. They've got kids that are blind and deaf, uh, kids with CP. Uh, it's a dad who actually came out of the ad agency world and found that a lot of these kids could do back-end work, data compil compilation and, and uh, uh, digital marketing and things that ad agencies didn't want to do. And he would look at these kids' strengths and, and put them in a position to succeed. Uh, he's got a great company. It's growing. I think he's mm -hmm. around 60, 70 employees. Uh, when Joan and I originally went out there, he was around 30 or 40 employees uh, to visit them. And uh, I know Don Desart, uh, one of her... Uh, uh, constituents have just got a, gotten a job there as well too. So uh, their big issue is transportation. I had introduced uh, them to Pace. The challenge is they're they're a for-profit uh, company, and mm -hmm. they're not they're they're not a non-for-profit. I'm wondering, is there any workaround where we could get them some uh, some vans, um, and would it be possibly even through the Village of Downers Grove if 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 de dealing directly with a for-profit company is possibly difficult? Is there a way we can get the, the municipality involved or even the county? But I'm just trying to, I, I talk to them and their biggest, their biggest problem is transportation, so. Uh. Okay, well, let me give you the simple answer to your question, yes. Yes, we would love, that is what we're here for. Sure. That is what Chris Rose does. We have a number of similar arrangements. They, yeah, she's taking notes. Uh, we have a number of similar relations with not-for-profits that I understand, uh, uh, Mayor. I could still call Mr. DeCiani Mayor. Uh, that it uh, that it is a for-profit institution. They are for-profit. Okay, yeah. I don't think that like counts them out. That means it's just we need to find a way to make that happen. At the end of the day, the service isn't for them, and so they can make a profit. The service is for those individuals, Correct. and that's our business. And we will find a way to take care of that. Recently. I went out to, uh, uh, I believe it was a little city facility uh, in northwest Cook County because it happened to be right across the street from where I work. I mean, right across the street. And they are helping folks with disabilities and we made a, me and Mr. Madden from uh, PACE made a, a day long presentation of how folks with a whole variety of disabilities can access the mainline bus. We want folks to access the mainline bus, to use our facilities that we already have, the capital investment's already there, the driver's already hired and trained, use the mainline bus. And that's a message I'd like you to take back to your communities just kind of across the board. It's a lot less expensive for them and for us to get them on a bus that's already there. But in that particular case, like that little city facility, there's all kinds of stuff going on there, including, I believe, Kind of looking at Chris, it's not in our area, but I, when I was there, there were three pace buses parked on, in the lot of the vans. And, and those are all ADA accessible, by the way. So I don't know exactly the financial arrangement that put those buses in that lot, but the answer to your question is, yeah, we can, we're glad, to, we're happy to work with you and figure out a solution to that. Well, I appreciate that because it's a great, great little opportunity for people uh, to succeed, mm -hmm. and uh, we just need to get in there uh, and home. So uh, whatever we can do to make that happen, I, I would uh, I would appreciate. I can I can give uh, uh, Ms. Rose the, all the information, contact information, so okay, we can great. follow up. But, we'll uh, be on it tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank right. you. Further questions, uh, Jim Zay. Tom, I just want to thank you. We had an issue last year with the Winfield Township was setting up a uh, ride DuPage pilot program. And there were right. some issues, and I called you, and you got into it, and it got all taken care of. So now we have a, a pilot program, and for. Winfield Township, Warrenville, and West Chicago mm -hmm. out there for residents and residents with disabilities. So mm -hmm. I called you, you were the man, and you took care of it for us, and that's, that program's up and running, and we really appreciate your efforts. On well, Pace took care of it for you. I just, I'm just a conduit of the information. That's one of the reasons why I come before the board every year, uh, is so that you know who I am. You can say, oh, this time our Coochie guy, he's our Pace guy, who is he? Here I am. Uh, Chris will get you in touch with me. If it takes political oomph to get it done, I'm there for that. 
technical is is Chris, and and we're here to make sure that your services are getting rendered. I'm glad to hear that the program is up. I was actually aware that it was up and running, and I haven't heard any issues, any problems on the pay side of it. So that's all good. We're going in the right direction. Further questions, uh, Member Renahan. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Here today, um, and thank you for bringing up the Willowbrook Corner project. That's something I've been very involved and in, interested in making work. So I appreciate the work of Chris Rose, um, everything she's done, and, and the hard work that Pace has put into a study behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate it. What you do is so critical, and I look forward to um, having something Great. to work out. Done. We have some work to do. It's not done yet. We haven't got the solution because it's kind of a complex problem. It is, but I appreciate your study on it. It is one of the lowest income tracks, it's certainly in my district, if not the county, and uh, sure. definitely need it down there. Thank Our you. pleasure. Further questions or comments? Uh, Member Bob Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Thank you again for the presentation. I'm looking at the first page, and the concern I have, obviously, is looking at the ridership. If I'm reading the numbers correctly, right. we're down 15% from five years ago, mm -hmm. and that trend is continuing downward. Do you yes. see that changing? Do, do you have strategies in place to reverse that? I know some of the things we've talked about here may make a difference, but, but that's a concerning trend because, obviously, fewer riders with more expenses is a math formula that's not going to work over time. <laughs> You're absolutely correct, and your observation of the numbers is correct. And in our projection in the document, we show that number continuing to decline. It's a bit of a conundrum for us. I have said many times that the main rider on pace is somebody trying to get to work. So if unemployment is, wrong, is low and employment is high, why would that be? I don't think it's Uber. Some people go, oh, that's Uber. I still, as I said before, I don't think it's Uber. You cannot get to work and back and forth. You can get to work on Uber every day. You just can't do that juxtaposition against a fixed line bus route. That doesn't make any financial sense. Um, beyond that, as, as, as employment has, has risen, uh, in the most recent report out just uh, the other day, uh, wages are rising rapidly. Folks would rather take a car. They don't realize, our studies show us over and over again, people have no idea what it costs to own a car and operate a car. But if, you get, if you're getting a raise, if you get a, a, a 50 cents an hour raise two years in a row, that all of a sudden, that adds up. That's 160 bucks a month. Now you can afford a car payment that you couldn't afford before. And so people are migrating as the economy has get, gotten better, much to our conundrum, people are migrating out of their out of bus into their private vehicles. And it's kind of wrong, in my view, I'm a bus guy, it's kind of wrong-headed. But that's what we think is happening. And so what we've determined to do, what I've talked about here in the past, is to provide great service. We're a business. The people who get on that bus are our customers. So we're trying to bring, I've tried to bring to the discussion a business perspective. That bus has got to be clean. As I just talked about before, it can't be a rattling wreck, right? People don't want to ride rattling wrecks. They want to, we had a program a couple of years ago where we had televisions on the bus, underwritten by an advertising agency, so you'd get an ad for Tide, but then you'd get five minutes of CNN. That values people's time. And they say, oh, I'm as valuable as the guy who gets in a high-rise elevator downtown Chicago. You've been in one of those lately? You get an ad, don't you? You get an ad, and then you get, a, you get like a 30-second loop of CNN because that system is saying to you, you're valuable. We want your eyes to look at our products. That's what we were doing on the buses. So, um, and if we can look at these eight routes that we're talking about that are underperforming, we can, we can, those were aggregate enough to either put another bus route line out somewhere to serve a need or to increase what they call the headway in the bus business, which is the time between the buses. If it's 45 minutes, that's one level of service. If it's every half hour, that's another level of service. So increase the headway. But uh, Bob, I've got to tell you, I'm disturbed by those numbers as you are. And the entire public transit system, bus system at least in the country, is confronted with the same problem. It's not, if I may promote my organization PACE, it's not a PACE-only problem. It's happening around the country. So we're aware of it, and thank you for pointing it out. Further discussion? Thank you very much, Tom. Mr. Chairman, Outstanding, as always. Thank okay. you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Okay, so uh, on the order of Chairman's remarks, just a couple of uh, 
pizza pieces of information um, in the past few weeks a couple weeks ago you all recall a few folks neighbors of ours came to public comment a very important part of our meeting uh, and they shared their concerns about the location of and the siting of these small cell devices, these wireless, uh, to facilitate 5G technology, wireless technology being placed in their communities. And, um, and so let me uh, please share a little bit of a brief history uh, of the county's actions um, and potential next steps, uh, please. So for those of you who were here on the county board in 2017, 2018, you, you know that we fought vigorously uh, alongside the DuPage Mayor's Managers Conference against the passage of the Small Wireless Facilities Deployment Act and advocated strenuously to our legislators about the need to retain local control, local authority to ensure that these devices were installed properly, safely, with local input, local control away from schools, parks, and homes. Uh, the public safety and health of our residents is always paramount, right? So, uh, however, <laughs> despite our best efforts, we, we lost the vote in, in the House by two votes, and, and the governor subsequently signed the legislation in April of 2018 over our objections again to the governor signing that bill. Every step of the process, every step along the way, we were vociferously um, arguing against this legislation. The bill severely, the bill that became law, severely limits our ability to regulate, site, or charge appropriate permit fees for the location, the siting of wireless facilities on county maintained infrastructure and included something they called a shot clock for when permit applications must be approved. So it's a very short time frame. Uh, so that, you know, if you deliberated too long and asked citizens too many questions about their concerns, that, you know, that you, you, you'd run out of time and they could just move forward. So uh, regardless of the complexity. So, so basically the legislation allows commercial interests to take control of public property for, yes, a private benefit, these telecom companies, and they would argue for the benefit of the consumers that use this technology for commerce and industry. Uh, to tie our hands even further, uh, in September of 2018, the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, approved a declaratory ruling placing even further limits on state and local government's regulatory authority to cite small wireless devices within the public rights of way or to consider public health or aesthetic considerations when locating small wireless facilities. It specifically says you can't bring up these issues. It's stunning, really, in its, um, in, in its obtuseness and in, in its, um, you know, uh, uh, obstacle. And it's, uh, so as the federal ruling by the FCC supersedes state law, we must turn our focus today away from Springfield, in my opinion, to the federal government regarding the location of 5G technology. Uh, it doesn't mean that the folks in Springfield who are contemplating repeal and so forth shouldn't continue, and we encourage and support that effort. But I think uh, just basic, you know, constitutional law, um, federal law trumps state law. Uh, overrides state law. Let's use that. It's a better word. Um, in an effort to coordinate and focus our response moving forward, uh, I have asked Transportation Committee Chairman Don Pachowski, there he is back there, Don, um, to host all county board members and interested parties at the next Transportation Committee meeting on January 7th for an update on the most recent laws and court cases governing 5G deployment how we are currently processing applications for small cell devices per our county ordinance and provide an opportunity for all health department uh, to share any research that they have collected. So we are all invited to participate and please invite your friends and neighbors. Finally, uh, as this is our last board meeting of the 2019 calendar year, Kind of sad, isn't it really, coming to a close? Um, I'll take this opportunity on behalf of the county board 
uh, if I may please, to express our holiday greetings and gratitude to all DuPage County employees. Our special thanks go out to those who come to work during the holidays, the folks at the DuPage Care Center, at the jail, public safety, public works, transportation crews, all the folks that attend to public service regardless of the day or time. Each of you is a vital part of our success as a county and we are deeply grateful. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all the best to all those of all faiths and to no faith at all. We wish you all well. So that concludes my remarks. Um, we move on to the order of business entitled Public Comment. No public comment today. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Wonder why. Um, okay, so we move on to the order of business entitled consent. Consent. There's been a motion and a second. Uh, all those. Oh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliot. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Krajewski. Aye. Larson, Aye. Noonan, Ozog, Bachowski, Renahan, Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Tornatori, 15. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, on to the order of County Board Mayor ja uh, Member James Zay. Got a lot of mayors. No a lot of mayors in the yeah. room today. Sorry Mayor about Jim. That. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Just a few items today. Uh, first item, I move on CBR 18-20, the appointment of Janice M. Anderson to the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. No. Covert. Aye. Desart. No. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog, Bachowski, Renahan, no. Rutledge, no. Selman, Doratori. Twelve-four. Twelve voting aye, four voting nay. The resolution will be adopted. Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move on CBR 19-20, the appointment of E.F. Todd Benson Second. to the DuPage County Ethics Commission. Been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliot. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. Pachowski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Tornatori. Aye. 16. Thank you. 16 voting aye, none voting nay. Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move on CBR 20-20, the appointment Second of Robert W. Ladour to the DuPage County Ethics Commission. Leave is granted. Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move on CBR 21-20, the appointment of Richard Allen Bolds to the Second Weed Mosquito Abatement District. Leave is granted. Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I need to, uh, we have a Scribner's error on this item. Uh, it should say at the bottom, tax uh, effective July 1st, 2020, not 2010, mm -hmm. which we can go back and get that. That'd be great. <laughs> so with the Scribner's <laughs> errors changed, I move on CBO 2-20, amending Chapter 33, Section 14 of DuPage County Code of Ordinances to implement DuPage County Cannabis Retailers Occupational Tax. <laughs> Leave is granted. Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On this next item, I'm going to yield the floor to Member Renahan, who is the Chairman of the Ad Hoc Adult Business Committee. Oh. Thank you, Member Mr. Renahan. Jay and, and uh, Zay, and thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, so I just want to give you a little bit of information as to why this appears on the agenda today. During the implementation process of the Adult Entertainment Facilities Ordinance, staff determined that changes need to be made for a few reasons, to clarify the ordinance's intent and application, to remedy implementation issues, to reconcile certain provisions and terminology, and to correct simple scrivener's errors. Uh, for example, at section 20-258E regarding mandatory training, it turned out um, it was assigned to the sheriff's office, but it turned out it was much uh, more practical and cost effective to do an on-demand video program. Um, another change, just to, for example, is section 20-262D, on catch-all provisions, um, we had a provision on, uh, on how we were doing provisional licenses, and they've always been allowed from the original 
time, but the, um, it lacked detail. So we've provided a little reasons why they've been issued. <laughs> Um, basically, it's to streamline the application and licensing process, simplify accounting administration, and eliminate uh, any potential challenges. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion? There's been a motion and a second. Is there a request for leave? Most favorable roll. Leave. leave is granted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zay. On to, thank you, Member Renahan. Uh, on to the order of finance. Member Bob Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Move approval Thank FIR you. 820, which is acceptance appropriation of additional funding for the Illinois Department of Commerce Work Innovation and Opportunity Grant in the amount of $250,000. Been a motion and a second. Mem uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Eckhoff, Aye. Elliott, Aye. Hart, Aye. Healy, Krajewski, 16. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval FIR 1020, which is acceptance appropriation of the Illinois Department of Commerce uh, Trade Adjustment Grant in the amount of $294,633. Leave is granted. Member Larson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval FIR 1120, acceptance appropriation of additional funding for the DuPage Care Center Foundation Sorry. Grant. Leave is granted. Mr. Thank Larson. you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval. FIR 2320, acceptance of an extension of the DuPage Animal Friends Unrestricted Grant for 2019. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval. FIR 2520, acceptance of an extension of the DuPage Animal Friends Foundation Coordination Grant for 2019. Leave is granted. Mr. Thank Larson. you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval. FIR 1620, annual general fund financial commitments in support of various recipients from the general fund for fiscal year 2020. Leave, Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval of FIR 1420 budget transfers for various companies and accounting units. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Finally, move approval of FIR 2420 placing names on payroll. Leave is granted. Thank you, uh, Mr. Larson. A fine report. On to the order of development. Member Sam Tornatori. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I move approval of an amendment to resolution DCP 15 19. For a change order to TPI Building Code Consultants. And a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Tornatory. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. Bachowski. Aye. Renahan. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. 15. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Member Tornatore. On to the order of economic development, uh, Mr. Tim Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in the way of a committee update, I want to say a couple words this morning about the really good work that our WorkNet DuPage Career Center is doing. Uh, this week, uh, we'll be releasing the Center's 2018-2019 year in review showcasing the really significant impacts that the center has had. I will share uh, just a couple of highlights with you, but I will also say that uh, they're available in this report, which will be issued this week. Um, <clears throat> clients who completed the WorkNet DuPage funded job training programs have earned more than $15.5 million in wages this year in DuPage County. $15.5 million in wages, people going through that program. Low-income clients of the WorkNet DuPage Center saw an 85.5% increase in their wages. Now think about that. That's almost a doubling. Low-income clients who have gone through the training center have seen almost a doubling of their wages. That's really something to be proud of. 80% uh, of the participants in the program, 80% have earned credentials in high-demand uh, occupations. Again, 80%, uh, a great success rate. More than 300 households have gained economic security through new employment as a result of their efforts. That's a great improvement for our county. Uh, the year in review, as I said, will be made public. Uh, this report right here, uh, both the WorkNet communication staff and the DuPage County staff will be releasing it. I encourage all of you to take a look at it. I encourage all of you to share it with your constituents. Because uh, if there is one thing we as a county board can do additionally to promote them, it's to make sure that the people in our districts are aware of the opportunities that they create over there. So congratulations to 
Lisa Shabak and her team over there uh, on a great year. Uh, with that, um, I will move passage of Resolution EDR 9-20 for approval of issuance of payments by DuPage County to training providers through the Trade Adjustment Assistance Grant. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Member Elliott. Uh, there's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kraduski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. Bachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. DeCiani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. 16. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, on to the order of environmental, uh, Member Liz Chaplin. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just on a way of committee update, earlier this month, the Chairman and I, uh, along with uh, various staff members, attended a PACE program meeting. And PACE is the um, Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing Program. And Not to be confused with the bus. Exactly. Or, yeah, right. Yeah. Being confused, that's why I wanted to make, point that out. <laughs> and... Um, you know, last year we passed the ordinance for PACE financing, and DuPage County is the first county in the state to have to, to um, use this uh, financing program. We've had two businesses use the program, which is really, I think, great. Um, and on July 9th, um, Power Forward DuPage is going to be having an event. January. Or January, I'm sorry. I'm thinking July already. <laughs> I want to get through the winter. Um, yeah, I want to get through the winter. Uh, but they're going to have that uh, January 9th at um, Power Ford, which is at, located at um, the IBEW Local 701 Union Hall. And Chairman Cronin, I believe you'll be giving the opening remarks. So um, and they're going to be talking about financing again and who can apply for the financing and what uh, programs are eligible for the financing. So um, everybody's invited. So if you'd like to come. And we're also going to have um, Anna Maria uh, Koliak come and speak at our um, environmental meeting that Tuesday before on January 7th. So it'll be a nice um, warm up for the meeting on uh, the 9th. So those conclude my uh, comments. And I will uh, entertain a motion on ENR 001520, a resolution to a appropriation of funding for the continued operation of the Regional Household Hazardous Waste Facility for $100,000. Thank you. There's been a motion and a second. Is there a question? Mr. Zay seeking recognition. Yeah. I just want to thank Member Chaplin and staff for, uh, you know, we had some discussion on this a few months ago. And just, it wasn't we weren't against Naperville, it was just that we just saw the numbers on the east and the west side of the county weren't using this facility. I know you, along with staff, have worked to get more events uh, up in the north and throughout the county. So I just want to thank you for that because, uh, again, it's not that they don't recycle. I just think they were just throwing everything away. So now it gives them more opportunity to get it out of the trash and, and get it recycled and get the stuff uh, where it's supposed to be. So thank you. Very nice. Okay. Um, seeing no one else seeking recognition, there's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. DeCiani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. Bachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. 16. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Member Chaplin. A fine report. On to the order of ETSB. Uh, in Member Sean Noonan's absence, we have Member Grant Eckhoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of ETSR 1-20, appropriation and transfer of uh, ETSB Sorry. funds from the wireline and wireless fund to the equalization fund. Hmm. Been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. Bachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. DeCiani. Aye. 16. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Eckhoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of ETSR 17-20, resolution to approve a revised intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage, Kane, Kendall, and Will Counties. 
Uh, there's been a request for leave. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Eckhoff. Uh, on to the order of Health and Human Services, Member Pete DeCiani. Thank you, Mr. Thank chairman. You. Uh, before I go on to my report, I wanted to or go on to my uh, two items. I wanted to thank uh, at this holiday season uh, Mary Keating and her staff in, in the human services area and, and Janelle Chadwick uh, who oversees the care center. Uh, the nurses, the CNAs, the all the support staff that that care for our most vulnerable every day. Uh, we really appreciate your service. We appreciate your your leadership, Mary and Janelle, um, and your dedication to uh, to the people of this county. So uh, with that, I'd ask for, I'd ask for a motion to approve uh, HHP, HHSP 011-20, a recommendation of approval of contract with Wellsky Corporation, uh, renewal of the annual homeless management info system in the amount of $53,826. There's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. DeCiani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan, Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Tornatori, <coughs> Zay, Aye. Chaplin, Aye. Covert, Aye. Desart, Aye. 16. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. DeCiani. Thank you. And lastly, an authorization of overnight travel in the amount of $667.50, all grant funded for the Department Leave. of Aging. Leave is granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. On to the order of judicial public safety. Member Grand Eckhoff, again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I Thank would you, move sir. approval of JPS 7-20, intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and Kane County for housing and detention services Second. for minors. Been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart, Giciani, 16. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Rockoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of JPS 1 20 recommendation for the approval of contract purchase order to Ray O'Hare and Company, Inc. for new officer employee uniforms for the Sheriff's Office. Leave is granted. Member Rockoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of JPS 2 20 recommendation for approval of contract purchase order to Advent, Inc. for security system equipment maintenance and repairs. Uh, leave is granted. Member Rockoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of JPS 10-20, recommendation for the approval of contract purchase order to Allied Universal Security Services. Leave is granted. And finally, I move approval of authorization to travel to Emmitsburg, Maryland for an OEM member. Leave is granted. Uh, brought the packet up with the ETSB one, the JPS. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, member Eckhoff, a fine report. On to the order of storm water. Member James Zay. Good morning again, Mr. Chairman. I move on SMP 320, approval of a contract issued to WBK second. Engineering, on call professional service, the amount of $60,000. There's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan, Ozog, Pachowski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Aye. Selman, Tornatori, 16. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move on SMP 4 20, agreement with engineering resources, professional land surveying services for the amount of $30,000. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move on SMP 5 20, inter agreement with Gaspar Alberts for consulting professional land surveying, the amount of $30,000. Leave is granted, Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Last item, an authorization for order night travel. One stormwater staff member to do Second attend the overall. Nutrient Load Reduction Strategy Conference in Springfield. It sounds very interesting. Load it does. Reduction. <laughs> hmm. Yes, leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, under the order of technology, member Greg Hart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move on TEP 12-20, recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to CDWG for Veritas and that backup additional storage for IT. Been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kajewski. Aye. Larson. 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 Noonan. Ozog. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Covert. 
Desart? No. DeCiani? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. Elliott? Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Member Hart. Uh, on to the order of transportation, Member Don Pachowski. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I would move to approve DTR 120, which is an intergovernmental right, agreement between the County of DuPage and Illinois Department of Transportation for improvements on Route 34. There's been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. <coughs> Selman. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin, Aye. Covert, Aye. Desart, Deciani, Eckhoff, Elliott, Aye. Hart, Aye. Healy, Kajuski, Larson, Noonan, Aye. Ozog, 15. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Move to approve DTR 2 20, an integral agreement between the County of DuPage and Illinois Department of Transportation for improvements along Route 83 or 38. Leave is granted. Member Pachowski. Uh, item 3 will be pulled up, Mr. Chairman. With leave of the body, uh, item C, DTR 3-20 will be removed from our agenda. Seeing no objection, hearing no objection, please proceed, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move to approve DTR 4-20, a local public agency agreement for federal participation between the County of DuPage and Illinois Department of Transportation. We have to have a roll call now. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Bachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Aye. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Here. Aye. Kajuski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Ozog. 16. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Pachowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move to approve DTR 5-20, an integral agreement between the County of DuPage and Illinois State Toll Authority. Leave is granted. Move to approve DTR 6-20, intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and City of Wooddale. Leave is granted. Move to approve DTP 6-20, a contract at Dink Finder Equipment Company for... Leave is granted, Mr. Pachowski. Love it. Grand all. So, I move to approve DTP 7 20, a contract to Verizon Connect for Network Fleet GPS. Move to approve DTP 8 I didn't say, I'm oh, sorry, it's granted. Just is, when we think about these things with the 5G and small cell wireless, just sort of, but leave is granted. Please proceed. All right. Move to approve DTP 8 20, a contract to Rush Truck Centers of Illinois. Leave is granted. Move to approve DTP 9-20, a contract to Selco Partnership, doing business as Verizon Wireless Services. Leave is granted. Move to approve DTR 1-20, an ordinance authorizing the execution of an integral agreement between the County DuPage and the Village of Oakbrook. Leave is granted. Move to approve DTR 381-8-15, amendment to a resolution for a local public, in, public agency agreement. Leave is granted. And move to approve DTR 4A-15, amendment to a resolution for a local public agency agreement. Leave is granted. Mr. Move, move to approve DTR 163A-19, amendment to a resolution to Arrow Road Construction Company. Leave is granted, Mr. Pachowski. And move to approve DTR 301A-17, amendment to a resolution to Martin Construction. Leave is granted. Move to approve DTR 162A-19, an amendment to a resolution to K-5 Construction Corporation. Second. Okay, so there's been a motion and a second. Would the record reflect that Member Elliott has left the room? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Pachowski. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Selman. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Elliott. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kajuski. Aye. Larson. Aye. Noonan. Ozog. 15. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Pachowski. And lastly, Mr. Chair, move to approve overnight travel for the Chief Highway Engineer to go to beautiful Champaign, Illinois. <laughs> Leave is granted. All right. Thank you, Member Don Pachowski. A very fine report. Thank you, sir. How are you? Ooh. 
Okay, so um, that concludes our committee reports. We move on to the order of business entitled discussion. We're all familiar with this. It's required under Public Act 990646, pension obligation projections required by the Local Government Wage Increase Transparency Act. Anyone seeking recognition? Seeing none, hearing none, we move on to the order of old business. Old business, yes, Member Renahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would move to waive the first reading of the earlier amended adult business ordinance, specifically item uh, County Board 8F, AHAB-0-0031A-19. Second. Been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Renahan? Aye. Rutledge? Aye. Selman? Aye. Tornatori? Aye. Zay? Aye. Chaplin? Aye. Covert? Aye. Desart? Aye. Deciani? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. Elliott? Aye. Hart? Aye. Healy? Aye. Krajewski? Aye. Larson? Aye. Noonan? Ozog? Bachowski? Aye. 16. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank, Thank you, you, Member Mr. Renahan. Anyone else seeking recognition of old business member Greg Hart? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On everyone's desk is a, a copy of the 17th Annual Giving Guide uh, published by Giving DuPage. This is our annual publication that uh, offers information about volunteer opportunities in the county uh, this year. And it's also been responsible for uh, producing over 1,800 volunteer connections just in this past year, along with the website and volunteer portal that are included in, uh, in this uh, Edition. And that, that represents a 21% increase from last year, which is great news. Um, so I encourage all members of the board to, to share the information in this giving guide with their constituents. It's also going to be included in an upcoming edition of the Daily Herald. And uh, let's continue to the, have the, the impact that we had over the past year. We have a goal of 2,000 volunteer connections this year, so we could use everyone's help in that. Uh, and as a, a board member on the Giving DuPage board, I also want to thank my colleague on the Giving DuPage Board, Bob Larson, who is concluding his uh, six years of service on the Giving DuPage Board. He's turned out. Uh, he's had a tremendous impact. I'm going to look forward uh, to, or miss looking forward to the meetings uh, serving with him on that board. But, Bob, thank you for all your help and dedication to that, uh, to Giving DuPage of the county. Thank all right, Bob. Bob. Uh, on the order of old business, anyone else? Member Krajewski. Uh, I, I don't think you need to move to reconsider. It's a procedural matter for a matter that's already been discussed. I think you could vote on it at any time, in theory. Don't we have to have to be waiving the first reading? Then vote on it? Do we vote it off before we waive the first reading? If there's a problem, do we vote? I'd have to take a look at the specific, uh, the specific Robert's rule on it, but I, I would say that if it's just to waive the first reading, the we voted, I guess, retroactively to make that original initiation um, the reading. But if you, if, for the la, for a, avoidance of all doubt, we can always go through and do it again if, if that's what the board would prefer. I think okay. Okay. Well, I, I think that we're fine. Uh, but with an abundance of caution, if everybody feels more comfortable, then yes, we'll entertain a motion and a second. What, would you state the motion, Mr. Elliott, please? Uh, uh, yes, I will. So um, I would move to reconsider uh, uh, item FIO3-20, an ordinance to approve an amendment of Chapter 20, Article 15 of the DuPage County Code. Second. It's been a motion and a second. A discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Elliott? Aye. Hart? Aye. Healy? Aye. Krajewski? Aye. Larson? Aye. Noonan? Ozog? Bachowski? Aye. Renahan? Aye. Rutledge? Aye. Selman? Aye. Tornatori? Aye. Say? Aye. Chaplin? Aye. Covert? Aye. Desart? Aye. DCI? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. 16. Okay, so now I'll entertain a motion to waive first reading. Would, Second. Okay, Member Renahan moves, seconded by Member Healy to waive first reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Okay, now we have a... Yeah, now we're on final passage, right? So now we have... You're moving approval of... Okay. Second. 
There's been a right, motion. Let's try this again. Um, yeah, I sure. move approval of, um, let's see, item F, uh, AHAB 00031A-19, approve an amendment of Chapter 20, Article 15, DuPage County Code. Second. Been a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Renahan? Aye. Rutledge? Aye. Selman? Aye. Tornatori? Aye. Zay? Aye. Chaplin? Aye. Covert? Aye. Desart? Aye. DeCiani? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. Elliott? Aye. Hart? Aye. Healy? Aye. Kajewski? Aye. Larson? Aye. Noonan? Ozog? Pachowski? Aye. 16. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your patience, which we were, uh, yes, very um, careful. Um, yes, so anyone else seeking recognition on the order of old business? Uh, member to start. Yeah, talk about item 8A, appointees to boards. Um, nothing wrong with this candidate. I just think, and this is not the only candidate who has now been uh, voted on to serve on more than one of the DuPage County boards or committees. And I think that with, I'm just asking, Chairman, with a population of almost a million people, that we could spread the wealth and, and have people sit on one committee or board and, and have that be a limit. We could pick somebody else for these other boards. This is, I think, the second candidate who sits on two boards now. And I'd just rather share the wealth with other talented folks from Page County. Yeah. Thank you. No, I'm always interested in considering uh, all sorts of people and we're always recruiting and looking I don't think I think she serves and she's appointed by another authority not the county Naperville appointed her to something so um, she's a civic-minded woman so um, yeah thank you duly noted anyone else seeking recognition recognition on the order of old business old business uh, member Sadia Covert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm actually very happy that we have the first woman on our um, ZBA board. So I'm very happy about that. And I think with Janice Anderson's uh, previous experience and knowledge uh, when she was a former county board member here of District 5, um, <clears throat> I think she's, she's a very smart, intelligent, uh, reasonable person, um, very good, good head on her shoulders. and. Um, I, I look forward to working with her uh, with, the, with any issues that come up with the ZBA. So thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate those comments. And it is, uh, it was very much part of our calculation in that she was the first woman ever appointed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And she does bring experience uh, at the local level in government. So we kind of thought she was uniquely qualified. And we're always seeking more diversity on our boards and commissions. Member to start. About, my point wasn't about a personal point at all. I'm sure she's intelligent and a fine candidate. I, my point was about redundancy of people who serve. I know, but you. I don't think that, I think the point she was making is that it's the first woman to serve on ZBA and she has experience here, which I think those are compelling reasons for, at least for my uh, actions. Member Pachowski. I would just echo what uh, Sadi said. I think she's a good candidate and the fact that uh, she's a female and she's well qualified, and, and it shouldn't be, you know, uh, an issue because it's it's her qualifications. And I've worked with her; we're on the board with her, and it was a great choice. The fact that she's uh, 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 maybe a Republican or something like that—it's really. Well, I think she's the objection is, is that she serves at the with the city of Naperville. She's appointed on some committee there, so yeah. So she serves on two. Right, that was the point. Right, right. But he only serves on one that I that we appoint. She serves on a committee with the city of Naperville, which we don't control. Stormwater here as well, but that was the she's a city appointee. Right, but it's a it's our committee. But to that point, um, when um, we do have these committee assignments, I know I've asked for it before, but if we can put our committee assignment maybe on the front page when a, what a opening for a committee is coming to if we can put it right on the front page of the website especially ones that have pay maybe under job opportunities because if people have to keep uh, the more clicks they have to make the less likely they are to go to that page so if we can put that right out there I think it'd be a great opportunity also with some of these appointments like especially to the zoning and planning you know, we all are friendly with the building trades, DuPage building trades, and they might, if we reach out to them at some point, they might be able to even suggest a retired... Um, turf. 
tradesman that you know really has very good experience in this type of um, great idea thing. So, so maybe for the next appointment, sure. reaching out to them and, and seeing if they might have. We always reach out to the trades. To always. So th a, those would be my sure. thoughts. But I would really like to see if we can get those committee assignments on the front page, maybe when they're coming, too, so that more people have the opportunity to see what's available and, and uh, apply. Well. Thank you. We Thank really you. know that we make a, a, a big effort to try to uh, advertise and make available opportunities, and we'll continue to do so. But I'm just glad we got our first woman on ZBA. Isn't that nice? Um, any further discussion on the uh, uh, on the uh, matter of uh, old business? On the matter of old business, anyone seeking recognition? Uh, seeing none, hearing none. Uh, on the order of new business, anyone seeking uh, member Liz Chaplin on new business? Under new business, I don't know if you're going to talk about this public act, this, um, uh, our um, discussion about uh, public comment. So I did have a discussion with uh, Connor, and what we're going to do today is hand this over to the state's attorney's office, see if they can find some policies that have been upheld by the appellate court, because we don't want to, um, we certainly don't want to limit somebody's First Amendment rights, and, or we don't want them to feel as though we're encroaching on those rights. So um, I've asked Connor to help to look to see if he can find some cases that have been upheld and maybe work on the language for that going forward. You know, I, I wish we could do this today, but I, like I said, I don't want to put us in any legal jeopardy and I, I don't want to infringe on anybody's rights. And it's kind of unfortunate that we have to talk about this, but I think the atmosphere out there with what's going on, people have been emboldened to just come out and maybe say things that they would have never said before. So, um, but I think if, if that's okay with the rest of the board to direct this to the state's attorneys to maybe look into other cases and have the language looked at and see if we can come up with something that might be acceptable. Yeah, I, I don't see a problem with this. Okay. It's on the order of business for purposes of discussion. Yeah, so we're so. engaging in a discussion yeah. right now. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Member uh, Larson, seeking recognition, followed by Mr. Uh, Pachowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, it, it's up for discussion, not for actual vote anyway. But I did want to raise a couple of points because uh, I, I believe we were all bothered by the comments that we heard last time. And I think the person who made those comments was appropriately rebuked by the chairman who recognized it and, and spoke on our behalf about that. The concern I do have is that uh, we not chill free speech. We all know, those of us who've studied constitutional law and history, that the First Amendment is there not just to protect speech we like, but speech, even speech that we find offensive. Because defining what is defensive, offensive to us is what, uh, where we get into problems, where we get into chilling speech. And frankly, we've all heard this expression as well, sunshine is the best disinfectant, right? So if somebody wants to come here and make a comment that is uh, uh, bigoted or whatever, they're going to have to stand and listen to us comment and respond to it. If it gets out of hand, certainly we'll be able to deal with that. But uh, if we go too far, and the, the language that was proposed here, and I understand that was just for purposes of discussion, but when we talk about things that are irrelevant or repetitious, or even profane or discriminatory, those are very broad terms. And um, in constitutional jurisprudence, especially in the First Amendment, specificity is very important because if you give broad categories, then you, you do potentially have a chilling effect. And, and I recognize and agree that the language of, of what was proposed here was discouraging those kinds of comments. Uh, and I think our state's attorney will agree that we have to be cautious in the way we approach. There's a difference between saying we won't allow it and saying we discourage it, and, and we can do that. But again, we don't want to create some sort of a chilling effect on how people make their comments before us. These are, after all, our employers. These are the people who pay our salaries and uh, pay the taxes, and we do want to be respectful. And there may be times they say, there have been times I've had to listen over and over again to comments that I didn't agree with, um, and that may be repetitious. Uh, but that's part of our job here. And, and so as we go through this process, I would just ask that we respect those things. And I know you do. Um, but that's, those are the concerns that I have. Thank you, sir. Uh, <coughs> Member uh, Pachowski. In my opinion, if anybody is attacked or commented about during public comment, then that person should at least have the right of personal privilege to immediately respond to that. And I think that's something that we should consider. So anybody whose name is brought out and anybody who's had anything said about them, I think it's only fair that immediately that <coughs> board member be allowed to respond directly to that comment. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yes, Member Chaplain. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And that, that wasn't really meant for board members because, in a way, I, I do think that the public should be able to come and criticize the board and our policies. Um, but my concerns were more the derogatory comments about Mexicans. And, um, you know, I guess somebody has the right to come here and say that, but I'm certainly glad that the young men from West Chicago were not in here when that woman made that, those comments um, about those people. I'm, I, about, it was just, like I said, I understand that we can't stop somebody from saying it, um, but if we could somehow, you know, just on our, um, on our sheet, on our sign-in sheet, maybe have a, you know, rules for um, the comments. But that's why I want to work with Connor to make sure, because I certainly don't want to stifle or, you know, encroach on anybody's free speech or make them feel that they're not welcome to come here and speak. But um, I think you can be, I think you can come and talk about an issue without going down that path. So, but if people want to, I guess they have the right. And I didn't say that they must. It was just should. So it wasn't a mandatory thing, but asking for a little respect that we like in the, yeah, in the board. No, I so mean, I don't was, think anybody disagrees with you that yeah, we would so that like that kind of decorum. But I, I do think that, as uh, Member Larson points out, and as I'm informed by the state's attorney, it's, 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 no, it's, it's a very careful, sort of uh, specific, and so any language that you employ it, it directing, so, I mean, when, when citizens come here uh, to address their government, um, it, it is among the most protected of all speech. And so um, how we receive it uh, or how we direct them to deliver it is is really uh, precarious, and so I would argue that our response was appropriate. It, she was, I think, rebuked and condemned uh, by the chair, or rebuked, and 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 I think that that's the kind of exchange that I think is kind of part of the public comment process. But I think we're all, we, we, we're all offended by her remarks. There's no boundary to how much somebody cares. I mean, we care. We all care. We were all offended by it. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, it, we, we all felt that this was, uh, was un, unnecessary and offensive. And we all uh, shared a sentiment rebuking it. And so I, I, I think that we as a body, a governing body, can all come together and agree on that, you know? So yes, we'll take our instruction from the state's attorney, but I, I also think um, the whole issue of First Amendment rights, that that, that that issue is raging in America these days. And yeah, let's, let's be smart and let's be appropriate and let's be sensitive and let's be Reasonable. Yes, Mr. Hart. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I think everyone's words here perfectly encapsulate what I think our next steps are. Um, I've already shared this with Member Chaplin, but in the specific language that was provided, I think it made reference to a three-day request for those seeking uh, assistance with um, ADA compliance at our meetings. Our current policy actually is two. We certainly want to, wouldn't want to make it more restrictive for uh, individuals needing that assistance. So thank you, Member Chaplin, for taking that into consideration, and hopefully that is part of whatever comes out of this discussion. Thank you. thank you. Anything further? Member Renahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to thank Member Pachowski for his comments because I do think that if a board member is attacked, they should be able to respond as a personal point of privilege. And I, I think agree. that extends to our staff. I, I think we all didn't enjoy what happened. Somebody who works very hard, and I you know, won't bring his name up because I don't need to relive it, but you know, I think he, he deserved a chance to, to defend or you know, support or say what he, he had done in, to support this woman. Okay, thank you. I think we're all pretty much in agreement on all this. Member DeCiani, please. Offer maybe a solution uh, that would be kind of a compromise. Uh, what, what about a, uh, uh, you know, a code of decorum um, policy or a uh, code of you know, something that we could post on the wall that basically says, please refrain from profanity, the youth of uh, ethnic, ethnic slurs, etc., is a common courtesy. Uh, maybe just having Sounds that there, we'll um, have to while, while the may not be enforceable, at least set the tone for the type of decorum that we'd like to see here in this body. And um, uh, I, I think it might be a, a possibly a, a compromise uh, that would be a win-win, uh, something that 
wouldn't be binding per se, but it would just kind of set the tone. You have for, to look at the law, and you have to look at the details yep. of the words. Yes, please, Mr. Elliott. I, I, there's been a lot of focus on one particular woman who spoke, I think, two two weeks ago, and and I think it bears mention that the vast, vast, vast majority of people that offer public comment do so respectfully and productively. And I am a little bit concerned that we are talking about changes in policy or taking actions or discussing actions that might have potential legal ramifications over what is truly the exception. I've sat on public boards for, I don't know, close to 10 years, I guess now, and less than a handful of times I've experienced anything even remotely close to like what we had uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so I would just urge us as a body to, to not always try to legislate for the extreme, but to, to legislate and recognize that the vast majority of our citizens are serious when they come here and are respectful and are trying to petition us in, in good faith. Well said. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Further discussion, Mr. Healy? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you handled it very well uh, when I was on the city council um, years ago. I, a person stood up and was talking about the fact that there was this, these worshipers who got out and took walks around their place with these people with black robes and everything else. They were talking about my church in the Easter celebration of the Orthodox faith. And I was sitting with all of them in Sharopolis, and I had to calm him down. And they, they were very negative, very bigoted towards the Orthodox faith. And maybe that's why I'm so tuned to that when people come in and talk about other faiths. But right afterwards, the city council tried to immediately do something like that. It was all in the best, and, and they were they thought that they were helping, you know, Nick and me. And you know, and what it really was was the mayor did as good a job as you did. Did a great job. He just told them that it just wasn't proper. Pradle? It, George Pradle? Huh, no, this was actually Mayor Albrecht from Des Plaines. Oh, wow. oh yeah. This is when I was in Des Plaines. Yeah. And the city council wanted to do something, and they kept talking about it. And you're exactly right, Tim. We had to calm them down and say, look, people say dumb things occasionally, but it's their right to say those things. And I'll fight to the death for them to be able to say those things. And I think the way you handled it was the proper way to handle it. I don't think we have to legislate on these things. I think we just have to admonish them, as you did. And you did it perfectly. So I want to thank you for that. Perfect. And I think that maybe there may be some general rules that we may be able to put forward that don't chill speech in any way, shape, or form. But it would have to be very minor. And even then, I'm just, I'm just not comfortable with in any way telling somebody what they can and cannot say on the board is... is Ignorant as it may end up being in some cases, so let's let's look at it. And let some time pass. Okay, thank you for that wisdom. Thank you, and thank you for raising it. Was a discussion I think worth having. So thank you, Member Chaplain. Uh, further discussion on the order of new business. Anyone else seeking recognition on the order of new business? Seeing none, hearing none, uh, I am reliably informed, and I know, that we do not have anything to come before us on the order of executive session. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. This meeting is adjourned to Tuesday, January 14th, 2020, at 10 a.m.